As statisticians, we got very formal about how we construct our hypotheses, as they are the things we're going to test. We're also going to be extremely cautious about how we make our decisions and how we write those decisions and those conclusions that go with them. So when we get to the hypothesis testing process, which we'll see in later sections, you'll see that there's a step five all, for every one that is a decision. And then step six is where you write your conclusion based off of that decision. We'll learn how to make the decisions later on. But for right now, suffice to say that there are only two possible decisions you'll ever be able to make. You will either get to reject the null hypothesis, i.e. reject H0, or you are going to not reject the null hypothesis. So if in step five, for whatever reason, you reject the null hypothesis, i.e. Um, you would do that if your p-value was low, we saw earlier. Um, we rejected that the dice were fair, if you remember back to the original example. We rejected that the dice are fair because the probability was very, very low. The other way to think of it is that the data that you received from your sample is far away from everybody else, or far away from what you would expect. All right, so if we make that decision to reject because our p-value is very low or because our data is far away from the norm, then we would write in step six, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that dot dot dot. And that dot 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 is standing for all the English words you're going to have to use to explain the context of the situation. What was the claim that you were trying to make in your alternative hypotheses? We always make claims about the alternative hypotheses because there's no need to make claims about the null. The null is assumed to be true, so you don't need to discuss it, nor would you write hypotheses about it. You're always concerned about the alternative hypothesis. That's the important part um, for your claim. I mean, they're both important, but they're important in different ways. The null is important because it's what you're assuming to be true. Therefore, the claim, which is the alternative, is what you need to talk about in your conclusion. So if you rejected the null, that means that you supported the conclusion in the, al in the alternative hypotheses. If you do not reject the null, then that means you do not have enough evidence to support the claim in the alternative. So let me put this one in green here. Right? So then you do not have sufficient evidence to support the claim in the alternative. Right? The claim is always the alternative hypothesis, and you're going to have to write out in English words, in a sentence, what that alternative claim was. So a couple things to note. Um, there's only two choices ever. That's all we're ever going to do. So um, we will say reject H0 or do not reject H0. That's it. You'll explain why those are. There's there's more than one way to explain it, but those are the only two decisions you'll ever get to make. And you'll also notice that we don't use the word prove, accept, um, because we don't know that this is true. We just know that our evidence is pointing in a direction or not. Right? We don't know the exact value of the parameters. If we did, we wouldn't have to do a test in the first place. So let's look at an example. So we have boxes of a certain kind of cereal are labeled as containing 16 ounces. An inspector thinks that the mean weight um, may be less than this so that the company can scam its customers. Well, that's not very nice. He collects a random sample of cereal boxes and weighs them to test his idea. Okay, so the, the label says that they contain 16 ounces right there. See that label? So that's your null hypothesis. That's what you're assuming to be true. Right? unless you can prove it otherwise. And the inspector thinks that the weight may be less than this. Right? So let me highlight those phrases. So this right here is giving us our alternative hypothesis. And this right here, containing 16, is giving us our null hypothesis. Right? So our null is that the mean is 16 ounces. Right? Mean is kind of thrown in over here. Right? It's, it's really for both of them. And then the alternative is that it's less than. So our null hypothesis and our alternative hypotheses are that mu is equal to 16 ounces or mu is less than 16 ounces. Okay. Now, if the inspector decides to reject that null hypothesis, how would a statistician write the conclusion? Okay, so they are going to reject H0. Let's look at that. Reject H0. That means that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. And that's what we'll have to write. So we'll write, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that blah, 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 blah. Okay. Okay, so the, the real trick of this is the blah, 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 because everything else is going to be kind of obvious for you. 
So the decision is made to reject the null. That means we write there is a sufficient evidence. And the other word you could write is enough evidence, um, whichever way you want to do it. So I'll write, I'll write the word enough. There is enough evidence to support the claim that the mean weight of these cereal boxes is less than 16 ounces for this particular type of cereal. All right, what if the inspector decides to not reject the null hypothesis? Well, that means that there was not enough evidence to support the claim, but the claim is still what it was before. So the back part of the sentence doesn't change. We would still say there is um, the mean weight of the cereal boxes is 16 ounces. So you can see, or less than 16 ounces, that is the alternative hypothesis popping up right? Every time this mean weight is less than 16 ounces. The mean weight is less than 16 ounces. That's the equivalent of this mu is less than 16 part. So you have to explain that mu is less than 16 part in words every time. And the beginning part is there was enough evidence to support the claim. So that was the sufficient evidence part. That's the yellow part right there. And then over here, there's not enough evidence to support the claim, right? And that's the green one right? Because that's how we write when there is not sufficient evidence. So we'd say there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim, and then we write what that claim was in words. All right, now you'll notice this is a little strange because we're making decisions about the null hypothesis, but we actually write about the alternative hypothesis. So our decision is the rejection of H0 or the not rejecting of H0 but we don't actually write about that in the conclusion. The conclusion part is there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim or there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. So we make decisions in step five regarding the null hypothesis, but we write about the alternative hypothesis. And that's a little bit weird, but it has to do with the fact that we assumed the null hypothesis was true. So there's no reason to write or talk about it. What we want to write or talk about is the alternative hypothesis, the pink part, because that's the part that really matters to us, because that's the part we were claiming. Also keep in mind that because the null hypothesis is true, we have to have quite a bit of evidence from a sample in order to reject that null hypothesis. Um, we don't do this lightly, or we don't take this lightly. So we're going to have to gain a lot of um, evidence, strong evidence, um, against the null hypothesis in order to reject it. And that has to do with the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. So you assume it to be true unless you can gain strong evidence to prove it 